as I was studying this week, last week we went up to the cross. And um, there was a, the, the minister brought out a couple of good points. And uh, one of them, he, he mentioned uh, everything we buy now has an expiration date. Did, did you know that? You look and see if my daughter came home and they cleaned my wife's refrigerator out one day. It's been quite a while ago. <laughs> and uh, they said, Mom, said we, we should throw this uh, food away, that had ex uh, some salad dressing. I don't know where she got them, that, but we did eat it. And uh, I think it was 2000, what, seven? <laughs> <laughs> so, so when they got done, our refrigerator was fairly empty. And uh, in Hebrews, the ninth chapter, Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and 27th verse, God made man, and he said that it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. I don't want to get the wrong idea. I'm not going to preach a judgmental sermon this morning. I'll let that up to you when you get through hearing it, you can judge. <laughs> but, um, so, when God made man, he put upon each one of us an expiration date. And as we read the expiration date, I guess I'm saying the right word, word but uh, it had the little information instruction there. And uh, it said used before, or the best if used before a certain date. And uh, you know, they mentioned that at, uh, at the cross, the minister, uh, I thought expiration date but the, what really hit me is used before 80. Used before you're 80 years old. Used before your time runned out. God didn't put, the, put it visible for us to see when our expiration date is. But he did say, it is appointed unto man want to die. So we're, we're expendable. We're just here for a short while. And um, the, the, the little song we used to sing in Sunday school, only what got done for God will last. Only what you do for, for God. Only if you fulfill the purpose that God made you for. Uh, there was a, on TV, it was uh, probably on the news about a little girl that got killed a year ago in a, in a car accident. And she had a plan when she was little. I mean, real young. She would, I don't know, five or six when she got killed. And uh, you say, well, she never got to fulfill her dream. And what her dream was that uh, children in Africa would have fresh, clean water. So when she lost her life, her folks wanted her dream to be fulfilled. And they have taken up millions of dollars. And they have, they showed on the, on the TV the fulfillment of a dream of children drinking clean, clear water. You know, uh, she probably accomplished more in her five or six years than a lot of people will accomplish in a lifetime. 
in a hundred years. Um, but God, God able to put within our heart what he wants us to do. I, I believe I said uh, last time I spoke that God showed me and asked me one night. He, he talked to me more at night than he does in daytime. And uh, he said, are you through? Are you through here? And, uh, you know, I thought about that, and I thought there are two meaning to that. Am I through in Quinault doing what God sent me to Quinault to do? We didn't come down here to run a mill. We didn't come down here to work in the woods. We came down here to pastor a church. And uh, uh, we had eight kids. Uh, you know, it is so lucrative to pastor. Uh, I pastored really. It lucrative. It, the money he made is really great. <laughs> and uh, when, he, he, when he came to Quinault, he followed me in the ministry of, we were here five, five years. Um, they, uh, if I get this right, they gave us a $15 a week salary, $60 a month. You know, that was really attractive. Uh, uh, we had eight kids. <laughs> Uh, I, I had to work in the woods. I came home, stopped at the shop, so hungry for a five-cent candy bar. It's been a while since we moved to Quinault. <laughs> a five-cent candy bar. And you know I had to go home without one because I didn't have 50 cents to buy one for all the kids. <laughs> and uh, I could have, I could, and I probably thought sometimes I should have, bought one ate it before I got there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you don't do that when you, when you have kids. Um, one of my boys, I'm talking now, that, uh, he, he accused us of, he said, Dad, I, after he got older, he said, I knew what you did, you guy did after we went to bed. You had company, you sat down there and, and made popcorn, and we couldn't have any. <laughs> I never remember that. But uh, he, he, he remembered that, he think he did. Um, but you know, we have an expiration date. It is appointed on the man once to die, and then the judgment comes. And everything that we do in fulfilling God's will for our lives, we will we'll face it again. And uh, There'll probably be thought come back. Well, you had opportunity, but you passed it up. Um, you had an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus, and you passed it up. You know, a girl told me a story. She worked on Oregon in, in a nursing home. And the Lord had been talking to her about speaking to this one person. And uh, she put it off and put it off. So on the weekend, God really impressed on her to talk to this person about their soul. So she couldn't wait, she couldn't hardly wait to get there Monday morning to go and talk to this person. She went to the room and the bed was empty. And the person had passed away over the weekend. You know, God gives us opportunities 
in this life, and he tells us to do things. And uh, we need to be obedient, quick. It said instant, in season, and out. And uh, then there's no regret. regret. Um, but our ex we're all stamped. You know, when we're born, I, I really believe that God had a plan for our life. I believe that uh, God knows. Is it too much for God to know when we're going to go? Uh, it is nice if we die on, during our life. Die out to self. If we're born again into the kingdom of God. And then we won't die. But on a, this body, it's going to, that we spend so much time at, on sometimes, we take care of it. Uh, I was thinking that uh, I wear glasses. I have bad eye. Uh, had to go to the doctor all the time. He'd give me a shot in the eye about ever, sometimes every month. Sometimes I get a reprieve this month, I get to go two months. And uh, I have a hearing aid. Uh, have bypassed into my heart. I thought, you know, it, it's a shame to wait all that. I think maybe I, I would get a mannequin and I'd get, transfer all that stuff on, it, on him. I still could live on. <laughs> Wouldn't be a bionic man, I'd be a replaced. <laughs> yeah. But if that happened, Delma, I want you to get a mannequin that is slim and trim and really, <laughs> really look manly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't have a comeback on that. I'll save it. But we're we're here for only a short time. And uh we are made in the image of Christ. We ought to reflect his personality. Amen. We reflect his, his goal. Um, in Hebrews, I read that in Matthew 6, 31. Now, if, I'm, if you get there before I do, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm not as fast as I used to be, but I'm faster in some senses than I was when I was younger. It, um, it used to take me 20 feet to fall down. You ever do that? You trip you, you, 20 feet before you fall down. But uh, over the years, I got faster, and now I fall right down. <laughs> because I haven't slowed down. Uh, I don't know about the reaction time or what, but uh, in Matthew 6, 31 through 34, Therefore take no thought saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what, what uh, will all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All of these things that you worry about may never happen. 
if we are, and I'm talking to the people that profess that, that Jesus Christ is their personal Savior, and that God will supply all of your needs when you need them. He didn't say he would fill your pantry up. He didn't say that you would you'd drive a new car. He, he didn't say all of these things that we have decided is a need, is a, a necessity. But we, we are to trust him, not worry about tomorrow. John, you don't worry about tomorrow. Um, we lay plans and uh, we plan for tomorrow. We, ha we have vision of what we're going to do. And uh, then we wake up and all of the things we had planned don't develop. Um, I'm going to be retired at 26. <laughs> My wife was afraid she's going to be an old maid uh, school teacher. No kids. She taught all her kids that. Um, but we have, we have plans. I'm going to be a farmer. That what I planned was. I did lived it. And all during high school, I would did. I had prepared and and got a few cattle through FFA, and, and I, I was dedicated to do that. I even, when I was going to high school, I got a piece of property where Dad lived, and there was no water on it, so I dug the ditch, I planted the crop, I ditched it for the water, but the water never came. All that work for nothing, but I had planned. And most of them didn't develop, and uh, and uh, but I we had planned. I had planned what I was going to do with my life until one night at the altar, God said, "You go and preach. You go to Bible school." And uh, you know we all have handicap too, and I've told probably most of you this. But it's still a reality in my life. I didn't go very many places during high school because I couldn't talk plain. I didn't go to the store unless I just had to because I couldn't make the people understand what I was saying. And when God called me to go to Bible school, um, there was the encouragement from the congregation. One man said, well, he can't even talk plain. And uh, so, you know, God asked us to do things that we're not qualified to do. God asked us to let him handle things. He said, no, take no thought for tomorrow. How many worried about what, whether you're going to work, have a job, unemployment going to run out, what are you going to do? Who are you going to marry? Uh, <laughs> thank you, Maria. Uh, you know, we worry about things that never come, that we never have to. And the Word of God said, take no thought for tomorrow, for what we have today is sufficient. Uh, I'm challenging you on this. Put your mind at rest. Don't worry about it. Um, God can provide. We came to a point in Bible school where middle of examinations and, and uh, the first uh, semester examined and I wasn't very smart in school anyway, and uh, Delma was, I would, our last year as I went to school and she stayed home and had another baby, uh, we had to prepare for Sunday school, kids, you know. <laughs> as you're getting ready to go into the ministry, you had to plan to have some 
kids in Sunday school, so we started out going to Bible school with one. We came home with three. And, um, but Delma said, uh, what are we going to do, John? You ate the last toast this morning, last piece of toast, last bowl of peaches, last cup of coffee was on the table, and we had another three and a half, four months of Bible school. Plus, uh, the first semester did exams that I would uh, struggle with. And um, I said, well, I said, God sent us here, and God, God can take care of us. And uh, so that day in the mail, I got a letter from somebody in Bible school that had $2 in it. Got another letter, had $2.50 in it. Boy, it's going up. And then that afternoon, I got opportunity to work, uh, unload a box car, help. And that night at 2 o'clock, when I went to bed, they had $16. Didn't have that promise the day before. And uh, now eat your heart out on this. That $16 bought grocery for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and God provided. And contrary to what some people think, uh, that second semester, um, I traveled with the choir. Yeah. <laughs> I traveled. We, had a, we had a pretty good car and I carried them. They used my car. And every two weeks they went out on the weekend and I got paid six cents a mile, was able to buy gas and have about 15 or 16 dollars left over. So we could eat the next two weeks. <laughs> that way God provided in the last part of our Bible school. But uh, I'm not saying that I didn't worry. I'm just saying I wasn't supposed to. Yeah. And you look back and see how God provides for you, then you should be ashamed because you didn't trust the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I get to say that because I'm on that side of the pulpit. <laughs> um, and then look at, um, you know, it said, what did God say to do? Um, you know, I'm glad I'm getting old. <laughs> because I have an excuse for losing my place. <laughs> but, um, you know, we can't add anything to our stature. Um, but what did God tell us to do? He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. <laughs> and the world doesn't necessarily mean overseas, doesn't mean Seattle. Your world is where you are at. If you're in Quinault, it said pray and, and talk to your neighbors. Um, Jesus died to save who? He died to save souls. Um, he sent you out to feed the hungry give to the poor. Um, to be obedient to him. You know, we have so much at our hands. And one of the things probably I've been guilty of and the Lord spoke to me that last day or two about. You know, I like to help people. I like to help people. I feel good most of the time. Uh, sometimes they don't appreciate it.
But God said, you don't help them and get them dependent on you. You tell them about the one that can help them. See? Sometimes we get caught up in doing good deeds because it makes us feel good. And what God wants us to do is to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ who is the provider for all their needs. We get caught up in doing good deeds. And God wants us to tell people about Jesus that can meet their needs. Because people will disappoint us. They won't appreciate what you do. Um, let's turn to Luke 10, 27. And Gary, if I get going too long, that wave your hand. I can ignore you. Uh, Luke, the 10th chapter. And verse 27. I'm going to start at verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered rightly. This do, and thou shalt live. And he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And Jesus told the story of a certain man went down from truth from the Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. You don't almost pick up a newspaper and read that, can't you? And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, Gary, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Gary wouldn't do that. And likewise, the Levi, the Rusty, when he had at the place, came and looked at, on him, and passed on the other side. Lee, Rossi wouldn't do that either. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, <laughs> I don't know who he is, uh, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wound, poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou what neighbored unto him that fell among the thieves? Who then, who'd your neighbor? You might not even like your neighbor. But Jesus said, he that loveth his neighbor as himself. I know if I found myself in the ditch, 
I'd really be concerned about myself. I'd want to get out of the ditch. If I would uh, wounded, uh, I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> I'd be concerned about myself if I would hurt. And uh, I've seen uh, uh, people say, well, if I'm not telling the truth, they may something fall on me and then they run for their life. <laughs> you know, we're funny people. But if we see a need, God wants us to answer to that our neighbor. That our neighbor. Um, it's Beth here today. There. She called me the other night. She had um, had a need. She had okay if I tell this Beth. She her and Richard, I believe, had come along and there the guy there waving his hand. Uh, and they stopped with Beth that she never stopped, but she did. And uh, picked him up and and the man had a problem. He homeless, he would had no place to stay, and uh, um, so uh, Beth and Richard picked him up and took him home and uh, had a place for him to stay. And he wanted, they prayed with him. He wanted to go to treatment and everything. And God laid on our heart, on their heart, to stop and pick this man up. And what, the next morning he would go on when you got up there? When next morning they went to where he had spent a night on day caught, he would go on. Never seen him again, right, Beth? But you know what I thought of that? I thought, you know, Beth, you'll probably see him again. The Word of God tells me that we entertain angels unaware. We never know. When God lays down our heart to do something, it is a, a wonderful opportunity. You may meet him in heaven. You may meet him along the way. You know, it isn't, it isn't far-fetched to think that God has angels. We know we have angels. And God tests us every day. And um, our neighbor, we do it as under one of the least of these, we do it under Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, turn with me in to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Gary came in this morning into the sanctuary and the light was off. He said, well, why is the light off? I said, probably preparing people to go to sleep during the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> He'd accused me of doing this a number of times. <laughs> and uh, I probably was because I hate to disappoint people. <laughs> uh, Matthew 16. <laughs> First, begin at verse 13. No, I'm... You know, sometimes I'm on the wrong page. Hmm? <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I gave you the right uh, address. I did, couldn't find it myself. Matthew uh, 16, verse 13. And uh, it said, When Jesus came unto the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto him, them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Um, Who do you say he is? Peter came up with the right answer. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood hadn't revealed this to you, but my Father. But I'd like to ask you, who, who would Jesus to you? Uh, is he the one that we worship in church? Is he the one that uh, healed our bodies? Is he the one that pays your bills? Is he the one that saved souls? Is he the one that can transform lives from a life of sin? Is he the one that can Take a man or a woman out of the gutter, transform their lives, give them hope. Is he the one that uh, loved the thief? Jesus died between two thieves. Is he the one that loved the good? the bad, and even the ugly. <laughs> and he said, be like me. Be like me. If you know Jesus, one of my favorite songs, Oh, How I Love Jesus. If we love someone, we want to be like them. We want to be with them. But when we, if Jesus is the one we serve, that we want to be like, that we necessarily don't like some of the people of what they're doing, You know, there was a missionary and his wife went to a foreign field and, and uh, there's a lot of lepers, people that had leprosy. And she could not bear to hardly even look at them because some of their fingers would gone, their nose would gone. Their flesh was eaten away. And she had a, had a real problem. And one night as she was sitting on the veranda, she said it looked like an animal came out of the brush and, and uh, came along the, the brush line and would come and toward her. And she did put her petrified. And, and, and she recognized it as a person that would get crawling and come along. And finally they came up to the veranda and, and uh, she would get, couldn't move. And uh, came up on the veranda, kneeling in front of her. 
laid the, <laughs> laid the head in her lap. And all at once, the love of God kicked in. God knew what she needed. And such an overflowing love went out of her to this person. And you know, sometimes we, we put a defense between us and the people that it, in need. Um, sometimes we take the attitude, if I don't know it, I'm not responsible. You're responsible for not knowing. But we need to, we need to look around us not look away. It's easy to give to missions. It's easy to have compassion for, for the loss around the world. But God is making us responsible for the one in Quinault. And God is able to make us able to meet that need for people if God lays it on our heart, God able to do all things. He's able to reveal things to you that you never ever thought about. Turn with me to Matthew, the 15th chapter, and the 21st verse. Then Jesus went then and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan. Some came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Thy daughter is grievously vexed with the devil, and he answered not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I am not, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yen TMT and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It did not need meat to take the bre children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And she said unto him, True, Lord, yet the dog eat of the cr crumbs which fall from the master's table. I wonder how we would react if we came with a need to this church and, uh, and we would ignore it. Nobody paid attention to us. They, they would act like we wasn't there. And they would ask and they would ask and they would be ignored. Um, probably 90% of the people would get mad say, well, they think they're too good. And um, we'd be offended. But what the pastor said, uh, we can't help you. Um, we can't help the dogs. We can't help you because you're a dope addict. Because you're a druggie. Because you have, you're a thief or a liar. We can't help you. I have come to preach the gospel to the good people in Quinault. Um, think they would be upset and would leave? You know, I wonder how, how many of us had been faced with the... Um, 
put down, uh, ignored. Uh, well, if they don't want me, I guess they, they don't need me. Uh, how many have been laughed at? We, we hear stories of the, some kid get bullied in high school, grade school. How many ever got bullied in school? You're the one they laughed at. You're the one they made fun of. Um, you know there are two kinds of people. If you um, do things to, uh, off the wall or can't talk plain and the word came out, comes out funny. I found there were two kinds of people, the one that laughed at me and the one laughed with me because it sounded funny. It sounded funny. I didn't blame them for laughing. But uh, to be laughed at and, and uh, ignored, um, this woman would determine. I wonder how many of us would allow something to keep us from receiving a blessing. I talked to a young man this week and he said, well, I have a problem with forgiveness. And I asked him, I said, is that worth missing heaven, heaven for? Unforgiveness only affects us. Don't affect the person that, we, that we're forgiving and not forgiving. But Jesus set an example for each of us. He gave his life that we might have eternal life. He looked out on the crowd that they would crucify him and he would hang in there. Blood ran down his face because they had beat the, the crown of thorns into his brow. And uh, he looked out on, on him and he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Do we have that attitude? Do we have that nature, Christ nature in us that we can look at those that are abusing us or making fun of us or cheating us or just plain disgusting? Can we look at them and say, God, I love them? Why? Because Jesus died for them. He died for the most awful, horrible person on earth. And Jesus died for them. And he asked us to love them. Is that the Christ we serve? Is that the kind of Christian we want to be? A lot of people change churches because they get offended in church. I wonder how we would stand before our Heavenly Father or before Jesus say, well, they offended me. I know what he should say. Pity, pity, pity. <laughs> That's what he should say. They hurt your feelings. They crucified me. They, they, they didn't give me recognition. Jesus said, they don't know what they're doing. I'm the Messiah. I'm the Son of God. I, I knew the glory of heaven. All, made, all things did made by me. And I wasn't offended, but I gave my life that they might have eternal life. Mm -hmm. The lost is around us, and if God brings you in face to face with them, they're your neighbor. You are responsible for their salvation. 
you are responsible to tell them about Jesus. Jesus is responsible for their salvation. So we pray. Our blessed Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. God, I love you because you've seen me in my sin. You heard the curse words coming out of my mouth. You saw every act I did. And you said he's worth saving. I thank you, Jesus, this morning that you love me. God, I thank you that you have placed within me the love of God that I might look at others and not look at them in my own love with my own judgment, but I may look because you died for them and you gave your life. And dear God, we pray this morning that there is anyone here that had not accepted you as their personal Savior, I pray this morning that that you would speak to them and they would come and let us pray and be a part of their salvation. God, we thank you and we love you this morning.